There's nobody here. Scared the what? There's nobody here. We're all over.
Good evening, everybody. Welcome to Masterworks. My name is Jason Meyer, and tonight we're going to go uh, a little bit of a deep dive with color. Talk about color in terms of advancing and receding color, and we're going to look at a variety of artists and styles to see how that comes across um, through all different artists. So I've got a small favor to ask of everybody. So as uh, times are changing, as we're opening up a little bit, or will be in the next few months and everything, uh, if you'd like to have any feedback on the frequency of the programs, um, do you like shorter ones? Would you like daily 10-minute programs or a weekly hour program? Anyway, if you'd like to put your two cents in, we'd love to hear from you and get your uh, thoughts on that as we change and grow together. But tonight, let's look at some paintings. So most of these are gonna be close-ups. This is an artist, I believe he's an East Coast artist. His name's Steven Anzel, or Azel, I believe. Um, and he does some, uh, Really cool stuff. Really cool stuff. So I'm going to give you a second to take that in and see if you can find the advancing and receding colors. Good evening, Susan. Glad you made it. Thanks for joining us. Miss Shakti, good to have you here. <laughs> you might respond to this one all right well let's have a let's have a little closer look were you able to put your finger on the advancing and receding colors so let's think about color in about four stages here you know we've got highlight or what we might call blanched out you see it up here on the forehead then we have a richer color that still looks lit. And then we have what I call the receding color. Other artists have called it that. There's all kinds of names, but it's the letting go. You see that gray green, the gray green, and how that gray green compares to that a little bit darker, warmer, right? That darker, warmer will hold while that gray green releases. Okay, so your shadow would be a holding color. Up here, your color in light and your white would be advancing, but we're talking about color tonight, aren't we? Not about white. So this would be the advancing color, right? And so would the blanche is kind of a receding color going back, depending. Notice how he got just a bit of blanche on here before he let those go gray. So interesting. It makes me feel sad. Yeah, there's different, and I am cropped up here. Um, I'll have to admit that, you know, seeing crops of paintings are, are different than seeing the whole thing. But I wanted to crop these so that we can get really in on these colors. And to show you that all the different ways that we can look at them. Again, advancing color. So let's see who's next. Okay, if my memory serves me right, this is going to be a Rubens, a Peter Paul Rubens. Um, and I'm not sure if this is the picture or if it was actually this yellow. I'd be kind of surprised if that's not overshot a little bit. But even so, when we look at the skin tones, when we look at the skin tones, the skin in light, in particular the face, what do you see? Do you, is there a pattern starting to develop here? Hey, Miss Claudia, welcome. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Do you see how this kind of a paler, grayer color seems to recede when put next to the warmer, right? 
This is a cool red. What I mean by cool, we'll compare this red, which looks kind of pink, to this red. Right, so this is a little bit hotter, but by adding white, that cools the color. But this can still be warmer than our receding color. See that? And then see the shadow is a warmer, harder hold there. Hey, hey, it's a superstar, Miss Cindy Meyer. Where would we be without her? I don't know about you, but I wouldn't be very far without her. So this artist um, is Stephen Early. Let's see if we can see if we can really poke our nose into this thing. All right, it's not a real it's not a real lady. It's just a real person. It's just a painting. I don't think we're invading her personal space. Where do you see the receding colors on this one? Mm. Dripping. Do you, do you notice how it's just forms? It's just forms. Love the, oops, why is that why I put up? Love the color palette. Yeah. What does that feel like right there? Right below our light, we go blanched. Then there's the color. Do we see receding here, all of this? Before we get into a shadow. Look, and over here it's a little bit different, but you see it's that same sort of coolness you're coming off of. Right? He's kind of played a game on doing this across, and look how he's focused the light. Do you think that light was actually brighter on this particular spot? It might have been, but most likely this is an artistic choice. How much do you need to say ear? Well, if you've got this many muscles and this well-defined back and arms, people are gonna be able to guess that's an ear. So you don't have to tell them very much. Are you guys getting a feel for these kind of letting go colors and a feel for these grab color? Now I'm calling them colors and I'm doing that for a reason. The reason is to point out it's not so much particular colors as it is a relationship between the advancing being warmer and the receding being a bit cooler. Can you feel that piece recede right there? Can you feel that recede? Okay, and again, you want to know the, the difference between the receding and the shadow. Right? Ideally, we want to be able to see the difference between highlight and blanched, blanched and color, color and receding, or what we used to refer to as air or background, and shadow. Okay, if you can keep those separate, you can really construct structures, forms, three dimensions. You can build three dimensions on a flat two-dimensional surface with those four pieces. Okay, this artist's name is Daniel Gerhards, and uh, this might, it looks very well like it's a study, not a study or maybe even just a start. But I like to show these sometimes because sometimes it's easier to see these advancing colors when they're more obvious. I'm sorry, receding color, advancing color. Right? You see this receding color here? This recedes too. So it's not a single color, 
although we can use that concept to great effect, it's a relationship. And if you understand that relationship, that will buy you some color freedom. And I wanted intentionally to show the contrast between the very obvious start and a much, much kind of finer finish, or we could say more refined. And that more refinement means subtlety. So can you find the receding color in this one? And yeah, it's extremely subtle. So the reason it's so important to see and recognize the relationship other than the color is sometimes these receding colors are so vague, it's hard to actually name them. But we can go by feel. This feels like it's letting go. This grabs us, right? This feels like it's letting go. This grabs us. You feel that letting go there as we turn down? Can we let go here as we start to head back towards the hair, right? She's not taking, or he is not taking this lightest light and sticking it hard edged against the darkest dark. There's a little journey there. There's a little journey there. Okay, and that receding color is such a huge part of the journey. Okay? So, I'd like to know if you guys can see this on these, on just some of them. Can you see it on this one that's more, most really, really subtle? Right? You're really painting on feeling when you're doing color, blanched, receding. I mean, there's a real, real subtle look at the receding, then the shadow. Right? Look how little shadow. That, that shadow's strong, but because of the edge and the subtlety coming out of it. Mm, 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 mm. Very nice. Very, very nice. And here we have a Mr. LaFell. And take a minute and see if you can see the receding color on this one. Can you see it? Can you feel it? Are you starting to see the difference between the advancing color? the receding color, and the shadow. Okay, those are the first three big pieces you wanna get. Advancing color, receding color, and shadow. Hopefully it's pretty obvious right here. Do you feel that? And notice how this advancing color too is not put down like this. It's not put down like that, but it's receding and it's put down very vague. It feels vague, doesn't it? There's not hard edges to it. So the idea of receding can also be applied to edges. You feel the difference between the forehead turning under right here and turning into shadow right here. How is he able to turn this under without going into full shadow? Yeah, so I can feel it and only see it as a softness. That's exactly right. That's exactly right. I really have to look carefully. 
Yeah, it. This is what happened when I went down to the Autry to uh, look at that still life of LaFell's. And I got so frustrated because I couldn't. Because what are we doing? I'm asking you to focus where he's taken focus away from. And that's why it's so hard to see. Your, your eyes don't want to hang out here because, look, there's a party. Hey, look at the good time over there. Oh, a bunch of bright lights. It doesn't want to hang out right here. So that softness you're seeing is exactly what I want you to get used to and recognizing and feeling. And then when you put a mark down, can you make it feel solid? Can you put another mark down and make it feel soft? Okay, again, we're just bringing this stuff into our awareness. And then as, as you paint, you're going to start to, huh, how would I do that? How would I do that? And remember, the answers are always the right, the, ans the right question is always the answer. The right question is always the answer. Captivating. Yeah, not the, and you know, when I first started, I felt to investigate this was to, you know, rob the mystery of it. But as painters, we, we've got to try to do that. What, what do you think makes this captivating? Well, why is this more captivating than your own portraits? Or even my portraits? I want you to notice the edges I want you to notice the edges. We've got a hard edge here in the eye. We've got a black and a white and a hard edge. We've got a hard edge between the white of the eye and the green of the eye. Notice these hard edges are all, they're not necessarily up here. We got hard edge, hard edge, black, white. So I'm gonna say that between these hard edges and this hard edge, which does what? Is that parentheses? So in a way, he's locked us in right here. But when you have something this bright with this much color against something that dark, you're not going to keep people from going there. So even though this is one, do you see how this reads as the focus is actually here and the second read is here and the third read is here? Also notice these shadows get to really shadow, shadow. And even over here from the corner of this What's happening to this shadow? He's sending it through atmosphere. By doing that, I want you to compare these outside edges to these inside edges. That's one of the reasons this is captivating. That nose doesn't have the same kind of edge and impact as those eyes. That mouth does not either. So that softness that you felt, Shakti, can you get that more soft and this more exact? So instead of saying more soft, how I say it in language, I say make this more and make that less. Now this is more than, say this, but this wins, All right? By the way, why does this win? Because this is a bigger impact right here. 
Can everybody see that this is actually a bigger impact? Hands down. But there's such a thing as psychological weight. And we look at people and we look them in the eyes and one of the reasons we look them in the eyes is to discern their intent. Are they helping? Are they hurting? Are they attacking? Are they loving? We need to know that as we approach, as people approach us, as we approach people. You know, we live in a safer world now than when this all started. And so those things still are with us. And so because of the psychological weight, he's even balanced that with the physical weight of the edge. <laughs> I didn't soft, but you cannot help but look at the eyes. That's right. And that's no accident. It's on purpose. It's on purpose. How is he getting a way of showing us more? Well, he's not showing us more, right? And, and you can, this is tricky. This is tricky because we're sh we should always be looking into the light side. And now it can appear that we're looking into the, but actually what we're seeing is this front corner, aren't we? And we're seeing more of this side of the box and less of that side of the box. And since he's put this shadow through atmosphere, if this whole shadow was as dark as this leading shadow right here, this wouldn't work. This wouldn't work, this wouldn't work, this wouldn't work. But because of them, look how he's carried that through right there. Because of his measure, because he knows how to keep these edges hard and those soft, but still let this seem like a big structure. It's amazing, it's amazing, it's amazing. It's amazing, oh good, 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 good. I love it when we get, how are we doing, 28? Let's see what else we got here, let's see what else we got here. Right, we want all kinds of fun things. So how about here, do you see advancing and receding colors? Right, and let's focus on the face because it's kind of what our study is. And some of our problems this month is our skin tone and, and making our skin tone come alive. The receding color is one of the keys to making that skin tone come alive and not look flat and dead. Notice how the advancing color has always been warm. Warm advances and then it doesn't really matter what direction and coolness that you go now it, it, it does but all coolness at a grayness is going to recede and then if we get a little darker richer brighter chroma stronger chroma that advances right white advances more than anything so color advances, white advances more. Gray, cool is gonna recede and dark is gonna hold. So in the setup of our four values, we have two advancing, our white and our color, one receding, our gray, our background, our vague, our number three value, and one holding it all together are dark, are shadows. Okay. Again, I'm not familiar with this artist, his way of working, his way of thinking. He may not use any of these terms or ever uttered any of these terms that I'm using. This is just a way that the paint works. Different artists think about it in different ways. But I want you to see the visual truth of it happening. Is there advancing and receding colors in here? And again, when you get that receding color in your eye, it needs to be in there in between, in between your shadow and your light. In between your shadow and your light. Can you see it in here?
What is that right under the nose? That's that receding color. Right? How does it recede before it heads into shadow? How do you feel that cool? Just like a release. It's a, it's a softness. It's a softness. Now, if you put this color down with a really hard edge, it might not work. Believe it or not, that's not hard edge there. He's got a little darker shadow just finishing that off. Feel it here, then there's that little bit darker. A little bit darker. Any receding color around here? Why, yeah. You see that coolness right under the match there? That's, that has everything to do why this looks so bright and on fire. If you just put yellow, reds, and oranges, it won't look lit. You've got to have that coolness so it makes this look so much warmer. Okay. Okay, so we're getting close to our time. <laughs> Just so everybody knows, I've got my timer sitting right here next to me. I almost do in every show, and almost every show I forget to hit start. But we're staying on time anyway. Where is it here? Where is our receding color? You see it, you feel it. And sometimes it's in the littlest, littlest amounts. It's just a bit of it before we turn to shadow. So if we want a soft edge, we can use some of that receding color before the shadow. And if we need a hard edge, we can go just directly to shadow. Again, another Daniel Gearhart's, and I just wanted to show you that here he doesn't even have any light on the face at all. But there's still an advancing and a receding color. What about, yeah, everywhere. Everywhere. Look how this advances over that. Huh. Huh. So this green is stronger than that purple. Okay, well that's good to know. That's good to know. Something to think about. Do you feel it back here? Does that feel like a receding color to you? So this won't be used just in the face. It'll be used everywhere all the time in different amounts. It can be so subtle the viewer can't see it. Or you can drip pieces of it in there. Different artists use it in just a myriad of different ways. But they all use it. They all use it. All right, last but not least, this is a little demo I did but a few months ago. Maybe it was a, more than a few months ago. Oh my goodness, how time has flied. Has, time has flown. And um, can you see the receding colors in here? Right, do, you, do you feel that soft grayness? And how it's separate than that dark, sh warm shadow? How you can use that receding color to walk from the light, influence the color, let it fall off, go gray, and then hold us with a start a shadow. And we can even have a dark that's separate from our shadow. Okay, save the most obvious for last. But hopefully you can see that. Can you see that this background too is a receding color when compared to this?
So the next time you're at the board, see if you can't start thinking about color a little bit differently. Rather than thinking exactly it's this and exactly it's that, try to get this spot to advance and the spot next to it to recede. Play with that and see what happens. Okay, everybody, I can't thank you enough for your time. And again, as we uh, move into opening up and different schedules, if you have a thought or insight uh, about a schedule that would be more comfortable to you, would you like a daily reminder of this, five or 10 minutes? Would you like a longer once a week show that's about an hour? So if you have any input, we'd love to hear it. If not, that's okay too. We can do it, but uh, we're gonna move forward uh, as we move on in time into other stuff. So thanks so much. We knew you know your stuff. <laughs> Claudia, you're awesome, thank you. Awesome, you're welcome Shakti, thank you, thank you. So glad you got something from it, Susan. Wendy, it's great to have you here. It's great to have you here. All right, good times, everybody. Have a good night. I'll be back in the morning with some morning feedback. I know we've got some work in, and so we'll work on some of that, get you up and running for the day, and off to the studio. In the meantime, have a great night, everybody. Love to you guys, and we'll see you in the morning. Bye-bye.